Reactions of metals with nonmetals. This is oxidation reduction. So an oxidation reduction involves a transfer of electrons, and this happens when we have um, metals and nonmetals reacting. We talked about this a little bit on Monday, but it didn't re get recorded, so we'll just do it over again. Couldn't hurt. So here's an example with pictures. Pictures are great. So here's the reaction. Magnesium is a metal. Oxygen is a nonmetal. When you have a metal and a nonmetal reacting, you're going to have an oxidation reduction reaction. A compound form between a metal and a nonmetal is an ionic compound. We've learned that. So what's happening here? We have magnesium atoms, and we have this oxygen molecule. Okay, all of these are neutral species. Magnesium atoms don't have a charge. This oxygen molecule doesn't have a charge, but they end up being ions. So how does this happen? The magnesium gives two electrons to this oxygen. Then it becomes magnesium ion with a two plus charge, and the oxygen becomes oxide ion with a two minus charge. Another magnesium gives two electrons to the other oxygen, and they form the same ions. Now we have positive charges and negative charges. They attract each other, and they form a compound. So this is a reaction involving a transfer of electrons. Which of the following best describes what happens in this representation of an oxidation reduction reaction? So let's talk about what's going on here. Here we have aluminum atoms, and they are reacting with this compound between this ionic compound with iron-3 ions and oxide ions. And the little arrow is showing us that the aluminum is giving three electrons to the iron. When the iron gains three electrons, it becomes an atom. And now the aluminum is an ion. The oxygens didn't do anything. Okay, those were not changed. But the aluminum and the iron were changed. So then which of these four statements describes what's happening? Well, the aluminum is losing electrons, right? So statement A and B are wrong because it says metal aluminum gains electrons. Well, that's not true. Metal aluminum loses three electrons. So both of these choices down here talk about aluminum losing three electrons, and that's true. Is it the O2 minus that gains the electrons, or is it the iron 3 plus? Well, the O2 minus remains O2 minus. It didn't gain or lose electrons. It stayed the same. The iron gained the electrons and became neutral. So the correct choice is, oh, we'll call, I need a color here, is D. Okay. Yes. So before the they intermingled, they were neutral. The the aluminum oh. was neutral atoms, and we had a compound that was overall neutral, formed between iron ions and oxide ions. But before they became a compound, they were they were no charge. The iron and the oxygen. And the oxygen. Yeah, but that happened before we got to this point, and so we're not concerned about that. No, I, was, I was comparing to the one before it, mm -hmm. the, where the magnesium and the oxygen had no charge. Right. So that's where oxygen would start with the iron. Yeah, if you're starting from <laughs> elements, then whenever you have a, um, you know, to form this iron 3 oxide, the iron would lose three electrons, and the oxygen would gain electrons. So let's draw that. So we could have Fe and Fe, and we have O and O and O. So this iron is going to lose three electrons. It can give two to this one, making it two minus. And this is going to become three plus, and it's going to give one to this one. it can lose three. And we'll, we'll learn why it loses three later. And then this iron can give two to that oxygen, and this becomes a minus two. It wants to lose one more, and so it's going to lose another one and give it to that oxygen. That one becomes two minus, and this one becomes three plus. And so it's kind of this group effort thing. 
because one oxygen cannot take three electrons. So iron is like, I need somebody to take these three electrons off my hands. The oxygen says, I'll take two of them. It's like, okay, but I still got this one. And the, another oxygen says, well, I'll, t I'll take one, but hey, wait a minute, I want two. I need two because that's, that's who I am. I need two electrons. And so runs into another iron who had given two electrons to another oxygen and has one left, and then they all make each other happy, but it takes two irons and three oxygens to have everything come out even. And that's why their formula ends up being Fe2O3. It's because that's how we end up with the correct transfer of electrons. Sometimes it, it makes a 2 plus. And in this class, we will not know why. It's just a mystery. There, there are reasons, but we, we're not going to go there. Any other questions? So if we were to write the ionic equation for that, we would just take out the oxygen molecules? Um, if it was aqueous, we would take out the oxygen molecules. But I'm pretty sure that iron 3 oxide and aluminum 3 oxide are solids and they're not soluble. So it would depend on the states. But yes, if they were soluble, they would end up being unchanged and be considered spectator ions. So let's look a little more at these oxidation reduction reactions. So anytime we have a metal reacting with a nonmetal, we can always assume that that's an oxidation reduction reaction involving electron transfer. You can also have oxidation reduction reactions between two nonmetals. Um, and we're only going to learn about one kind, and that's when oxygen is either a reactant or a product. Now, when you have two nonmetals forming a compound, the compound's not ionic, right? Two nonmetals form a covalent molecular compound. So when we have this sort, it's not going to be ionic. It's a little harder to understand why it's um, why that would be an uh, an oxidation reduction reaction, but it is. And there really should be like some examples or something. So I'm going to make something up. So if we had a reaction like this, where we have CH4 plus O2, CO2 plus H2O, um, two of those, and two of these. So if we look at this reaction, we should learn to recognize this as an oxidation reduction because we have something with oxygen as a reactant. This is a combustion reaction, and combustion reactions are always oxidation reduction reactions. So it kind of just abruptly ends here in the chapter. But is what? Why? Why? Um, that's a good question. The um, Looking at how the ions form makes a lot of sense. Um, here it has to do with how the electrons are shared, and it has to do with um, this little thing we call oxidation numbers or oxidation states. Um, which they talk about in Chem 1A. Um, and so there is an explanation, but I, I think it would not be a good use of time to go into it. Because there's just a lot of background information we have to go over. So it's, it's one of those because I said so things, right? And, and sometimes that's okay, 